Hello everyone. I am Dr. Priyanka, a final year PG resident at Atal Bihari Vajpayee Institute of Medical Sciences and Dr. Ram Manohar Doya Hospital. Today, I will be presenting a poster on characterization of breast lesions on ultrasound. The aim of the study is to detect and classify lesions into benign and malignant based on the sonographic morphology and to correlate the findings with mammogram using BIRADS. Breast cancer is the most prevalent cancer among women worldwide, causing increased mortality. Lack of awareness leads to detection of breast cancer in the advanced stages, making them difficult to cure. Reinforcing the importance of breast screening, ultrasound and mammography for breast screening are efficient and relatively easy to perform. Ultrasound, along with mammography, plays an important role in distinguishing benign lesions from malignant lesions. The study was conducted in the Department of Di Radio Diagnosis at Atal Bihari Vajpayee Institute of Medical Sciences and Dr. Ram Manohar Doya Hospital, New Delhi, from 1st March 2022 to 30th November 2022. 40 cases were included who presented with pain and lump in breast from all age groups. The imaging characteristic of benign lesions were well circumscribed, hyperechoic tissue, wider than taller, smooth marginated, smooth lobulations less than three in number, thin echogenic pseudocapsule, absent or non-significant axillary lymph nodes. The malignant characteristic of lesions were sonographic speculations, deeper than wider, microlobulations, angular or obscured margins, markedly hypoechoic nodule, sonographic posterior or caustic shadowing, branching pattern, punctate calcification, duct extension, and heterogeneous echotexture. The result of the study were, in the symptomatic patients on imaging, 25% cases were normal, 45% cases had benign lesion, and 30% cases had malignant lesion. Maximum cases were detected in the age group of 40 to 50 years. Benign cases outnumbered the malignant lesion. The most common symptom was lump in breast followed by pain and most of the patient presented after six months of symptom. Now the benign lesions. Case number one. Here we see a well-defined, well-marginated, oval-shaped, wider than taller, hypoechoic lesion, which is a lipoma. In this, on ultrasound, a well-circumscribed, oval-shaped, homogeneously hypoechoic mass, wider than taller, with posterior caustic enhancement and edge showing is sheen. On mammogram, a well-circumscribed, oval-shaped, high-density mass lesion is noted. It is a fibroadenoma with pirates 2. Case number 3. A well-defined, sharply marginated, anechoic cystic lesion with posterior caustic enhancement is seen, which is a cyst. By REDS2. Case number four, an ill defined, irregular uh, shaped, solid cystic heteroechoic lesion is seen in the retroareolar region with significant vascularity on limited color Doppler and overlying skin thickening. On mammogram, this lesion was seen as irregular shaped high density mass lesion with speculated margin with overlying skin retraction. It was given as BIRED 5. Case number 5. Here we see a well defined, predominantly circumscribed, wider than tallest, solid, hydroechoic mass lesion with partly obscured margin with edge shadowing and posterior caustic enhancement. Significant vascularity on limited color Doppler. On mammogram, it was seen as an oval shaped, high density mass with partially indistinct margin in the lateral one-third of the parenchyma. It was assigned by red 4A. Case number 6. We see a well-defined, oval-shaped, solid, hypoechoic lesion with lobulated margin. Posterior caustic enhancement was seen. Significant arterial vascularity noted. On mammogram, it was seen as predominantly circumscribed, oval-shaped, high-density mass lesion with microlobulated margins. Punctate calcific no, no, focus was noted within the lesion. It was given by REDS 4C. Case number 7. Here we see an irregular shaped, solid, hypoechoic lesion 
with obscured margin and significant arterial vascularity on limited color Doppler. On mammogram, it was seen as a predominantly circumscribed, irregular shaped, high density mass lesion with partially obscured margin seen in the lateral one third parenchyma of the outer lower quadrant. Few irregular shaped coarse heterogeneous calcifications were noted. Thickening of skin and subcutaneous tissue at nipple areolar complex seen, nipple retraction seen, few axillary lymph nodes were noted. This was assigned by Reds 5. Discussion. So the primary role of breast imaging is to detect and characterize abnormality that could represent malignancy. Benign breast changes can be defi dis uh, definitively distinguished from malignant lesions through the selective use of interdisciplinary collaboration. Benign proliferative breast diseases are the breast condition wherein there is more glandular or fibrotic tissue than the expected for patient age and parity. These conditions include fibrocystic disease, adenosis, fibroadenoma, cyst, ductal hyperplasia, and papilloma. All breast cancers are believed to arise from the terminal duct lobular unit. It is the distal most part of the ductal branching system which opens into the lobule of the gland and is the site of most active cellular proliferation. Invasive or infiltrating duct carcinoma is the most common histological subtype. The mammographic interpretation has a category of definitely benign lesions by REDS2, but there is no definitive malignant lesion. Mammographic detects lesions which are either suspicious or highly suspicious of malignancy. Hence, all such lesions need to be subjected to biopsy. Conclusion Benign breast changes can be definitively distinguished from the malignant lesions through the selective use of ultrasound. Breast ultrasound is widely used to confirm a diagnosis of cancer, to look for additional disease in the breast, for image guided biopsy, and localization and assessment of the axilla. These are my references. Thank you.